Hi class, today we're going to study chapter 24, section two, the Greeks fight each other from the story of the world and this war is known as the Peloponnesian War. In this video, we're gonna review chapter 24.2 and then discuss the causes of the Peloponnesian War. And then we're gonna talk about something called the First Peloponnesian War, which is like a warm up to the real thing which is called the Peloponnesian War. So I know that's a little bit confusing, but yeah, the first Peloponnesian War and then the actual Peloponnesian War. So let's start with your review of chapter 24.2. So after the Greco-Persian War, there was a time of peace. This is when you had architecture built like the Parthenon pictured here. Um, the Greeks carved something called the friezes, which are pictures carved into marble. And the Greeks tried really hard to make their pictures and their statues look real. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. Um, but like we talked about last video, this was the time where Greek enters into the classical period or what we call the classical period, where you have Athens um, figuring out their government and creating a democracy. And you have all those famous people that uh, you studied in the video called Famous Athenians. Um, however, this time of peace didn't continue because Sparta and Athens were both afraid that the other city would become too strong and the war between these two cities began in 431 BC. Sorry, I know this is like out of place, but here's a picture I just wanted to show you of um, a frieze in, um, from the Parthenon. So the Peloponnesian War um, happened when the Spartans invaded and the Athenians stayed inside of their city. The plague broke out in the city and this plague in Athens was spread by fleas and rats, but they didn't know this at this time. So the people are dying in the city, but they can't leave the city because it's under siege. Uh, Pericles, the greatest Athenian general at that time, died. And then this guy who I just don't really like, <laughs> Alcibiades, he was really just tired of the siege. And so he rallies the Athenians to attack. He's like, come on, you guys, like we can do it. And the Athenians were really weak from sickness and, and staying in their walls for this long. And they were just soundly defeated by the Spartans. The Athenians were just really angry and they wanted to get rid of Alcibiades. And Alcibiades is just like, yeah, I'm not staying here. So he deserts the Athenians and he goes to the Spartans and oh my goodness, I just really don't like traitors. But he goes to the Spartans and he tells them, hey, I know a secret passageway of how you can get into the city. So the Spartans are like, cool. And so they follow Alcibiades and they take over Athens and Sparta becomes the strongest city. This doesn't last for long because Greek after this war is just really, really weak from all the fighting and just a lot of men dying. And they are just in a great position to be conquered, which will be the next video after this. So let's talk about the causes of the Peloponnesian War. How do you go from cities who were allied with each other to fight off the Persians um, to these two cities now fighting each other? So we're gonna talk about the how the Hellenic League dissolved. During the Greco-Persian War, the Greek city-states had formed an alliance called the Hellenic League to fight off the Persians. After the war, Sparta believed that this league should be dissolved. They didn't see a purpose in it any longer. However, Athens believed that they should keep the league together in, uh, for defense. They also wanted to try to push the Persians back even further away from Greek territory. So they didn't agree on this and Sparta and the cities of the Peloponnese region, I'll show you in a map on a map in a second, but they break off of this Hellenic League and they form, reform, it was, it was a thing before, um, something called the Peloponnesian League. While 300 city-states remained in the Hellenic League, um, but this eventually became known as the Delian League. So the Delian League was an alliance of 300 Greek city-states and it was formed to protect against Persian, for future Persian invasions. This was led by the Athenians because Athens was a very powerful city and they're all together kind of one because they want, they all want to be allied together in, in case Persia attacks, but they also want the protection of Athens. Um, however, it eventually became really dominated by Athens so much that it became like an Athenian empire. So the Athenian empire isn't 
actually like the name of what happened, but a lot of people look back and they're like, basically that was an Athenian empire because Athens became really controlling um, more of the alliance and just how things were run. Uh, sometimes they forced membership using their military and they didn't allow a city to leave, meaning a city would say, hey, like, we don't want to be a part of this league anymore. Athens was like, no, you're not allowed to. And they would send their military because Athens was bigger than all the rest of these cities. They would send their military to stop them from leaving. Um, and so they made all of these cities under the Delian League um, pay tribute in the form of money, ships, and material. And then instead of Athens using this money for, you know, for the purposes of the Delian League of like defending themselves, they used the money for their own purposes. So people were not very happy with the Delian League and Athens became really powerful with an incredibly strong navy. And if you can see in the pink, um, that is Athens territory and all of the area in the yellow is the territory of the allied city-states under the Delian League or the Athenian Empire, if you want to call it that. Meanwhile, the Peloponnesian League was led by Sparta and it included Scillies cities in the Peloponnese region, but nowhere else. Like you saw in the Delian League map, like it's kind of spread all over, but the Peloponnesian League was concentrated in an area. Membership was voluntary. Sparta doesn't, didn't force people to be part of it. Um, you didn't have to pay tribute to Sparta. However, you did have to swear to have the same enemies and allies as Sparta, and you had to provide soldiers when needed. Uh, so here's a map of all of this. So you can see in the red, that's the Peloponnesian League. Yellow, you have the Delian League. Blue is the neutral state. And then purple, just for kicks, um, that's uh, the Persian Empire still. History.com says the formation of the Delian League in 478 BC united several Greek city-states in a military alliance under Athens, ostensibly to guard against revenge attacks from the Persian Empire. In reality, the League also granted increased power and prestige to Athens. The Spartans, meanwhile, were part of the Peloponnesian League of City-States. It was only a matter of time before the two powerful leagues collided. And if you remember back to our Life in Sparta video and Life in Athens video, these two cities who are the head of both of these leagues are very different in their uh, worldview, in, in what they value. And so you can see, like, like this quote says, it's just a matter of time before they disagree and clash on something. So again, Athens is just gaining power. Um, Athens is using the money they received from the Delian League to build and fund their own beautiful city. So we studied Athens during this period already, just because of how the chapters in the book worked out. But you have those famous Athenians coming, uh, like they're existing during this time. They're also building like the Parthenon and these beautiful things. But it's happening in part because of what they're what they're doing with the Delian League. When the cities try to withdraw their membership, like we said, Athens would send their military to make sure they stayed in the league. And so Athens is becoming really imperialistic, which is unfortunate when they were proponents of democracy, right? Like you get a say in your government, but not these other cities. So Athens became imperialistic, using this time to expand their navy, conquering territory in the Aegean Sea. So, so that's, you have like these tensions between the uh, Delian League and the Peloponnesian League. And during this time in Sparta, the Helots, who, if you remember, are, they're not slaves, but they're not citizens. They're kind of serfs and they're making all the food for the Spartans. So the Helots outnumber the Spartans 10 to one. They're like enough of this and they revolt. Athens is like, hey, let's go help them. And they go to assist the Spartans, but the Spartans just refuse the, Athen the Athenians' help. And I think one of the reasons they did this is because Sparta is really suspicious of Athens right now. They don't agree with what Athens is doing in, in spreading the Delian League and using the funds for their own city. 
Um, I think Sparta is also envious and jealous that Athens is honestly the most powerful city in Greece at this time and has the most influence. And so between just being like suspicious and fearful and jealous, the Spartans are like, uh, uh, we don't want your help in putting down this rebellion. The Athenians then were like, excuse me, we're helping you and you don't want our help. And so they're angry and they feel really insulted. Um, so then they're like, fine. And the Athenians allowed the helots running away from Sparta to settle in Athens. And they're like, sure, we're not going to send you back to Sparta. You can just live in our city. And this, this now in turn angered the Spartans. So this is one of the causes as well. Here's another cause. Um, the long wall. So during this time, Athens is rebuilding their wall, which was destroyed during the Greco-Persian War. If you remember, after the Battle of Thermopylae, Persia is able to enter into Greece because Persia wins, and they're destroying cities. And one of the cities that, that was destroyed was Athens. And so Athens is having to rebuild. And so Athens is rebuilding their wall around the city. And the, and the Spartans just oppose this building and they're like, stop building. Um, again, because Sparta is, Sparta still at this time has like the greatest uh, soldiers and Athens knew they couldn't really do anything, but it's just, it's just a bad situation. Sparta doesn't want Athens to become more, ter more powerful. So they tell them to stop. Um, again, so Sparta's, Spartans feared Athens becoming too powerful and Spartans didn't want Persians to be able to use Athens as a base if they attacked again. So they're like, hey, if Persia comes again and takes over Athens, they could use that as a really powerful military base if it's all walled off. And the Athenians didn't listen. And I'm going to tell you a story of how this all went down because I think it's really interesting. So you have this man from Athens and the Spartans come and they're like, hey, stop building your wall. And the Athenians were like, oh, of course, of course, like we'll stop, wink, wink. Um, so the man says, I will send my leaders and I will come myself and we'll have a discussion about this in Sparta. So as he's gathering these leaders to travel down to Sparta, the he tells the people in Athens, drop everything you're doing every single thing you're doing, anybody who can walk, your priority is to build this wall and get it done. And the people did. And so you can see in the in the ruins of this that that some of the the rocks like it was like you're not trying to find like a perfectly fitted rock. It was like just put whatever we have. And and you can see that in in how it was built. But anyway, so everyone's just rushing to build this wall. And meanwhile, this man and the leaders are just going at a snail's pace down to Sparta. He gets there first and he's like, I we can't have this meeting. I don't know where my leaders are. And the leaders are just like taking their precious time to get there. By the time they got there and the meeting started, the wall in Athens was completed. And so when Sparta was like, stop building your wall. We don't want Persia to use it as a base or whatever reason they gave. He's just like, you don't get to tell Athens what we can do with our city like you don't have a right to do that and I'm using creative license that's not exactly what he said but um and so Sparta was really really mad that they kind of tricked them and they still built their wall now on top of this Athens built something called the Long Wall, and it was built around the city of Athens, eight miles to the port of Piraeus and around it. And I'll show you a picture in just a se second. But this way, Athens could get supplies and food, even if they were under siege. So here's a picture. As you can see, you have Athens right here, and you have these long walls. And now, again, Spar or Athens at this time is building this huge navy. And so if they could guard this area, um, even if they were under siege, if you could get supplies through your Navy, then Athens would be fine, even if they were under siege. And, and Sparta just really didn't like this. So those are the causes, some of the causes of what started the Peloponnesian War. So now we're gonna discuss like the warm up, the first Peloponnesian War. So there was a conflict between Corinth and Megara. 
which is, oh, that's not a good color. Let's do this one. So here's Corinth right here. Sorry if that's hard to see. And this is Megara right here. And both of them, as you can see, are in red. They're both part of the Peloponnesian League. And typically both were Spartan allies. So they're in conflict and Athens is like, let me step my foot in business that's not mine. And they're like, we're gonna side with Megara and Sparta declares war on Athens. And so that's kind of like the catalyst, like what started the first Peloponnesian War. But the first Peloponnesian War, again, it's not like the real thing. It's like a series of small conflicts and it lasts about 15 years. Most of the time Athens and Sparta weren't directly fighting each other. But they're getting involved in like all these cities that are like part of their leagues and things like that and and they do it in a way that really makes the other city angry and it ends the first peloponnesian war ends with something known as the peace of 30 years so let's talk about that so the peace of 30 years wasn't <laughs> it was meant to last 30 years so they were like hey let's sign this deal that says we're not going to fight for 30 years but it only lasted 14. Um, the agreement stated that neither side could go to war with one another and Athens and Sparta would be recognized as equally powerful like you're powerful you're powerful like we're both equal like it's good however tension is just rising the entire time the Delian League and the Athenian Navy is just they're both becoming even more powerful and Sparta doesn't like this and that leads us into the real thing like the Peloponnesian War that you read about in the story of the world from 431 to 404 BC and for that information I'm going to watch you uh, make you watch this video and take notes because I can't do all the cool like visuals that this video can do it has really good information this video will start um, giving you like a brief introduction of uh, or a brief like recap of the Greco-Persian Wars and how that leads into the, the Peloponnesian War. Um, so go watch this video. Now, I'm going to link another video in the description um, made by the same per person, but it's called the Peloponnesian War Extended Version and it's 12 minutes long. This video right here that you see in this picture is gives you like really good overview information if you want like really specific how the peloponnesian war was divided into three different phases and some of like the great leaders go watch the other video it's not required but you can pick which one you want to watch and then take notes and make sure you take notes in a way that i know you listened and you understood pause the video if you need to don't go like super crazy about it uh, like I know some of you will um, but watch this so you gain a good understanding of the war and uh, that's it so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time